zoom in a little bit and give you guys a little bit of some street bearings on uh, some of the communities that this is impacting. Folks in Bales Mills, uh, Dennings, you're included. Avondale, uh, once again, you want to be inside of your um, interior room away from all doors, all windows right now as we're getting a radar indicated a tornado signature. Once again, we're seeing some rotation. Uh, the greens that you see are winds in effect blowing towards the radar. The reds are winds that are blowing away. So this is going to impact folks that are in, from New Windsor all the way down through Bloom into Shipley and Campus Heights. Uh, if you're in Alta Vista, you're right on the edge of where this warning is set to uh, expire. There's some heavy rain, so you're not going to be able to look out of your window and see this. This is going to be rain wrapped. Combine that with the fact that it is, uh, it is late. It is nighttime. Uh, this is not going to be the easiest thing to see. We're picking up on some shear values that are pretty strong as well. This is in that same area along uh, this is Bower Sox Road, um, Dennings Road. Uh, folks that are in this area, that's where we're picking up on some of those strongest winds. I want to give everybody a heads up on where this is headed because it's moving towards the northeast. Uh, we're going to play this uh, for about 15 seconds, just 15 minutes just to to get an idea of this loop. But you can see this warning is a continuation of a warning that existed for Frederick County. Once again, this is in effect for another nine minutes as this cell continues to move on off towards the east northeast. So we will time this out so that folks that are in some of these uh, downwind communities can have some lead time. But if you're anywhere in uh, South, Southern Carroll County, you want to go ahead and get to your interior room. Go ahead and uh, download our app. You can actually stream me there and I'll be tracking you, uh, walking you through this cell as it continues to push towards the north and east. Timing this out for about 25 miles. This is going to arrive in Westminster within the next minute or so. So Westminster, uh, you don't have any time to really play around here. The rain's coming down out there. You're hearing the winds pick up. Uh, you want to go ahead and get inside of an interior room. We will get a few more communities here. Uh, if you're in uh, Finby, you're also included within that same time uh, range. Hampstead, this is about 20 minutes away. So if this cell holds together and continues to rotate, you're going to have a tornado worn cell over your head in about 20 minutes. And you can see that a severe thunderstorm warning exists just to the south. So that's going to include portions of Frederick County as well. That's going to be moving also towards some of our other viewers. So we're going to have to continue to monitor these two cells as they shift towards the east over the course of the next few minutes. So if you are just joining us, uh, we're cutting into programming right now because of a tornado worn cell that is uh, just to the south of New Windsor. So this is Bale. This is Dennings. This is folk in Jason Town, Westminster, Campus Heights, Mountain View. You need to be on alert as we are tracking uh, this rotating thunderstorm that is pushing towards the north and east. And you can see from this image where that rotation is kind of tightest. And I'm going to circle it for you. It's a broad rotation, but that's going to include folks in Bloom, Mountain View. You can see the reds and the greens because you see those contrasting brightness um, so close together and so tight. That lets us know that we have a rotating thunderstorm capable of producing that rotation all the way down to the ground. So this is how we this is how we look at thunderstorms from radar and determine where the danger is. So this is for folks in these locations. But if you are downwind, that's going to include people in campus heights. Carriage Hills, Bethel, Clearfield, Peppermint Park, Deer Park, Adams Chance, Brummel. You need to go ahead and find your safe place inside of that interior room. For most folks, that's going to be a walk-in closet. Uh, other folks, it's a bathroom. You want to just get away from all of the outside elements just in case you get some of these strong winds pushing into your uh, communities. And this is a part of a, 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 a large system that has been pushing towards the east. If you were with us earlier today, if you looked at our article online, we told you that we were kind of in the warm sector. Uh, there was a warm front to the north of us and a cold front that is going to approach over the next couple of days. And in that warm sector, you typically get a lot of activity, a lot of thunderstorms that fire up in the afternoon. And if there's enough energy sticking around through the evening, you can continue to see some of these strong thunderstorms. And that's exactly what we're seeing. Uh, two cells that are producing some heavy rain uh, and some rotation, which is the reason for us cutting in. I do want to take a look and see if we can see hail. And we are getting some um, some some at least radar indicated hell signatures uh, but once again where those winds are the strongest where we're concerned about that tornado warning once again shows here in this central region 
This is south of, south of Avondale. This is going to include folks that are in Canterbury. Canterbury, you have the strongest winds in this system, uh, along with Bell's, Bell's Mill and just to the north of Ridgeview Estates. That's where we're seeing our greatest concentration of wind. That's also where we're seeing the strongest um, tornado signature on radar. So you need to be in that place. And for folks that are upwind, you need to go ahead and prepare for this as well. And this is angling towards Westminster, Alto Vista, Campus Heights, Finby, the Mountain View area of Clearfield, Reese, Carriage Hills, all of these communities that you see just to the north and east, that's the direction that this cell is moving. And as of now, we do not have um, any confirmations of this rotation. So the only thing that we can go off of is this radar signature. But we are going to consult with the National Weather Service chat because we do have a team of um, spotters, storm spotters that are on the ground across our state and they're able to give us an idea of what they see on the ground. So we're working to get some confirmation from those folks, but right now our, our primary goal is to keep you and your family safe. Um, and that means that you need to get away from all of the outdoor uh, elements, uh, all of the windows. Um, that's gonna include all of these folks that's in this area. I want to zoom out a little bit because there is another thunderstorm that's going to be moving into our viewing area within the next couple of minutes. That's a severe thunderstorm warn cell that's moving through the Mount Airy area. Folks that are in Eldersburg, you want to go ahead and be on alert as uh, this thunderstorm is producing some damaging wind gusts. Um, and it is a part of a parent cell that is rotating. So once again, we uh, are just tracking via the National Weather Service is a radar indicated tornado. Uh, this is um, located near the Westminster area uh, and it is moving um, northeast at 20 miles per hour. Um, this is a, a tornado that is indicated by radar moving to the northeast at 20 miles per hour. And this warning has just been extended. Uh, this has been extended um, further eastward. So this is all of those folks in those communities that I was just telling you about needing to be on alert. Uh, this is uh, Bollinger Estates, Bethel, all the way to Adams Chance and Hampstead. Uh, we're continuing to monitor uh, this rotation on radar. Uh, pretty significant rotation. You can see the greens uh, located in the Avondale area and then the reds in Mountain View and Finby areas. And that rotation has continued to linger we're seeing some shear signatures and shear is just another one of those meteorological terms that lets us know that it's windy there's some strong wind embedded in this cell as it is moving towards the east we do not have any confirmation of this on the ground so we're just going off of the rotation that we can see in the atmosphere but all of these folks need to be on alert and i do want to kind of redraw this out and give you guys an updated timeline um, but i want all of these folks that are inside of all of these communities all the way to patapsco patapsco woods beaver ridge southwood hampstead arched bow valley we want you to already be in your safe place as this continues to push on out towards the east and it's moving the updated speed is at 25 miles per hour so it has increased in speed as it continues to race off towards the east so we're going to go ahead and time this out and get as many communities as we can inside of this so that folks can know exactly when this will be passing over their communities so uh, once again all of these folks that are listed right now autumn ridge carroll meadows walnut ridge clearfield you need to be in your safe place because this is moving into your area momentarily uh, you're probably already hearing the rain you're not going to be able to look out of your windows and see this coming uh, it's dark outside and anything that is uh, coming out of the sky if it's touching the ground or attempting to touch the ground it's going to be rain wrapped, so your eyes will not be able to make uh, vis visuals with that. So it's going to be safer for you to find that interior room, whether it's a bathroom, whether it's a walk in closet. You want to be away from all of these doors and all the windows as this system continues to push towards the east. In Hampstead, you have about 16 minutes lead time. And if you're in Moncton, you have about 40 minutes, a little bit over a half of an hour. But we want you, we want to make sure that folks are able to get into their safe places, but also be prepared for this as it continues to move towards the east over the course of the next few minutes. So this is folks in Alto Vista, Campus Heights, Finby, Mountain View, Shipley, Deer Park, you should be heading to your places now. Remember, we always want folks to have a, a safe place designated in their house during these type of events that we can actually uh, see this. If you're in Adams Choice, um, Carriage Hills, Reese, Bowlinger Estates, 
Deer Park, Beaver Ridge. You're all part of that new extended tornado warning that has been shifted towards the east, and that's going to stretch all the way to Shiloh, all the way to Arch Du Bois uh, Valley, it is Hampstead, Castle Oaks, all of these communities. So if you're just joining us, I want to kind of do a, a wide angle view of what we're tracking right now. Um, a line of showers and thunderstorms pushing into the region. We told you that we were under this level one risk for some strong to severe thunderstorms because we were under that warm sector. It's kind of the area in between uh, a warm front and a cold front where you get strong southerly flow. If you stepped outside today, you noticed the temperatures were nice. We're forecasting the same type of day tomorrow except warmer numbers. So there's going to be the potential for that same type of instability. So that level one risk that's in effect for tonight continues into the afternoon and evening tomorrow and it's also extended into into your Wednesday. So we're going to be doing this dance over the next few days, watching some of these thunderstorms tap into some of that energy that is in the atmosphere. And we're seeing some evidence of that right now with this severe thunderstorm uh, warning that's in portions of Carroll County, but most importantly for this tornado warn cell that is in also Carroll County. Um, and that's encompassing uh, Westminster, Alto Vista, Campus Heights, and the Finby area. We always do these checks continuously in these type of events to look at our, well, this is our storm relative velocity. So what we look at this image for us to determine the direction of the winds, because that's how we can pick up on that large scale rotation in the atmosphere. And you can see evidence of that right here. This green is winds blowing towards our radar site, and this red is winds blowing away from it. And because they're so close together, that's letting me know that there is a tight rotation that encompasses this entire community. And that's lots of locations, lots of neighborhoods are enveloped in this area, and it's moving towards the east with, with a slight northeasterly component at about 25 miles per hour. So we're focusing on these folks because we need you to be in your safe place. We need you to be prepared, whether that's just strong winds or you're actually part of where that tighter rotation is. But also we want to give folks downwind a little bit of notice. And that's going to be a lot of smaller communities. That's Hampstead, that's Bethel, Bollinger Estates, Beaver Ridge, uh, all the way down towards Filesburg. This is moving in your area. And you can see with the latest radar scan update, this brighter green is continuing to dominate. There's still some red right here. So we're still seeing this rotation and then it's enough for us to continue to to monitor this, but also to track this this worn cell. And once we zoom in, this is one of our uh, features that allows us to look at a lot of different dynamics within thunderstorms. Um, this in particular, we're looking at some of the, the wind speeds that we're getting estimated. And you can see that uh, in that uh, campus heights, uh, Chapel Heights area, campus heights area, we're looking at 70 miles per hour winds being possible there. And those winds are also rotating. So some very, very strong winds. And just to put that in perspective, that's near hurricane force winds gusting in those communities. So that alone is a reason for us to be on edge. Uh, you know, we had winds last week that gusted 50 miles per hour and toppled trees and we had 34,000 people without power. We're looking at stronger wind gusts with, uh, with a thunderstorm, with rain that's soaking the grounds. We could definitely see some serious issues regardless to whether or not we get a confirmation of a tornado on the ground here, just with the dynamics that are at play within this thunderstorm. So definitely something for us to be concerned about. You know, we saw stories last week with uh, uh, home trees falling on homes. That's something that's definitely of concern. And that's another reason we want you to be away from the outer elements, away from the doors and the windows, those outer walls and find that interior room uh, to be your safe place over the next few minutes. You can see this is actually shifted towards the east. So those stronger winds now are moving into Alto Vista, into Campus Heights, into Finby, just to the north of the Mountain View area. So folks that are in Rebus Retreat, Clearfield, Reese, Constance Acres, this is all pushing towards you. Uh, and this warning is set to expire at 930. So we still have a uh, well over 25 minutes uh, tracking this thunderstorm. Uh, granted, it holds together. Reasons for us to be concerned. We're seeing some hail out of that as well, which was another one of those secondary risks for this evening. Latest radar scan has shifted those winds just a little bit more so you can see the stronger winds now from Middlebrook all the way down towards Finby. Ca uh, campus Heights are still kind of in that realm, but this is stretching towards Clearfield now. So if you're in Reese, in Bethel, Brentwood Acres, Tannery, Carriage Hills, this is moving. You're probably seeing some heavier rain right now in those communities. The winds are picking up a little bit and you're probably hearing some small hill. The winds are going to come next, so we want you to be aware of this system as it continues to shift towards the east. And I'm constantly zooming back out because we do have another worn cell that's in the southernmost portion of our viewing area. It's a severe thunderstorm warning and I want to watch it just to make sure it doesn't start rotating as well. 
But we can see right now that the greatest rotation is going to be uh, just to the south of Westminster. Uh, quite frankly, along 140, it's going to be crossing over uh, 140 within the next few minutes, moving to the east northeast at around 25 miles per hour. So we're going to look to see if we can get any um, any confirmation of anything on the ground and not getting anything yet. Of course, you can tweet us if you're in that area. If you're hearing things, we don't want you to go outside and take pictures. We don't want we don't need video footage. We need you to be in your safe place, but you can not tweet us and let us know what you're hearing. Um, that's going to be the thing that you can uh, do to to kind of help us out the most. So continuing to monitor these two thunderstorms that are moving through portions of Carroll County, uh, folks that are um, next door. If you're in Baltimore County, northern Baltimore County, northern Harford counties, you want to make sure that you're also being aware because this cell is moving uh, in the direction of you. There's still some lead time and there's still the, the potential for this storm to weaken as it shifts to the east. But lead time is the best thing that we have uh, to give you an idea uh, of what could be moving in. And it's better to be prepared for this system than to be scrambling at the last minute. So if you're in any of uh, northern Maryland, that's going to be northern Baltimore, northern Harford counties, just be prepared for this to continue to shift towards the east. That means we could see some damaging winds uh, at the very least and maybe even uh, some rotation moving into your communities. And you can see some of this rain pretty heavy, so you're not going to be able to look out west and see that coming. You're not going to be able to do that. Uh, whatever is is rotating right now in portions of Carroll County is not going to be seen. It's rain wrapped and the rain is pretty heavy with that being said. So I want to give an updated timeline and I want to take it out a little bit further so that we can get more communities involved in this as this system continues to shift towards the east northeast. So we're going to take this out. Uh, so folks that are in Hampstead, you should be in place because you're on the edge of this rotating thunderstorm moving into your community. Uh, if you're in Sparks, you have about 25 minutes. Same for Moncton. Uh, Jaredsville, you're on alert. If this continues to rotate, this will be on your doorstep within 30 minutes. So you want to be aware, have a plan, have everyone in the house understand what we're tracking and, and be prepared to make that move if necessary within the next 30 minutes. And that's going to be the same for folks that are in Powellsville. Uh, once again, Powellsville, you're about 40 minutes away from this system being on your doorstep. And we can get a few more communities embedded here. Uh, I want to take it out a little bit further to try to get you um, a little bit of notice on where this is headed. Uh, I want to zoom down to street level because that gives us the best idea for some of these communities uh, where this is. Um, once again, Hampstead, you're picking up on some of that rain is getting heavier. Same for Adams Chance, Delmont, Bethel, Bollinger Estates, Deer Park. That rotation is moving into your communities within the next few minutes. But downwind, there's some other neighborhoods that are, are not far away from getting some of this. And that's going to include folks in Upper Co, Filesburg. If you're in Trenton and Boring, you need to be on alert and be prepared. Uh, this warning could be extended to you within the next 10 minutes if that rotation signature continues to be relevant on radar. That's the same for Hill town and Forreston, um, arched bow valley you're still included in that warning and you're picking up on some of that heavier rain within the next few minutes as well i like to take a look at our shear because it lets us know where we're getting some of the greatest uh, uh rotation signature and stronger winds and that's moving into that reese bollinger estates deer park and scottsdale community uh, once again we're tracking this tornado warning uh, set to expire in about 22 minutes and we're still seeing evidence of rotation on radar and this warning is for Carroll County uh, and it's going to include all of these communities that are embedded within this red polygon stretching all the way to Hampstead, uh, Shiloh, Carriage Hills and I'm going to circle where the tightest rotation is for you right now just so that you can have an idea of the folks that we're most concerned about at this moment as this tornado worn cell continues to rotate. And we're looking at uh, some of the strongest winds right now moving through Middlebrook, Alto Vista, Campus Heights, uh, Clearfield, you're on the edge. Same for Rebus Retreat. Uh, this is moving uh, 
a little slow. It's moving at about 25 miles per hour, and that's kind of corresponding to where we're seeing some of these brighter greens. Um, this rotation signature is still pretty evident on radar, uh, not as tight as it was earlier, but you can see uh, some broader rotation within that region. And that's the reason why the National Weather Service hasn't let this expire quite yet. You can see the brighter greens here, the brighter reds, so that, no that lets us know that we have a broad rotation, but uh, in this area right here is where we're thinking we're getting the strongest signature, uh, and that's why that tornado warning has yet to expire. And then it also has a, a sibling, a, a severe thunderstorm warning for the southwestern corner of Carroll County. So Carroll County right now, the folks that we're the most concerned about, but all of our neighbors to the east, including Baltimore County and Harford counties, we just want to be on alert as uh, these thunderstorms are continuing to move at about 25 miles per hour towards the east. So whatever is left of these cells will be moving into your communities next as we head through the next couple of hours. And I want to take this out wider uh, because once again, we were telling you earlier today that we were in what's called the warm sector. And that's where the greatest instability is. You know, temperatures outside were nice. We warmed into the mid 70s. That's above where we should be for this time of year. A southerly flow that brings in a little bit of moisture as well. And then a cold front moving in from the west. It's going to take a couple of days to actually push through. It's kind of a forcing mechanism. And in between the two, we get the greatest instability. And of course, we had several tornado warnings earlier today to our south, one to our west in West Virginia that was occurring during the six o'clock and seven o'clock newscast. And then we're concerned about this rotating thunderstorm right now that is moving through portions of southern Carroll County, uh, producing at least some strong damaging wind at best. Uh, but we, we had a pretty significant rotation signature earlier, and the rotation signature is still pretty pronounced. We're getting uh, the brighter greens just to the south of Westminster along uh, 140, moving into the Bethel community. That's also a uh, opposite of the brighter reds that we're seeing in the Beaver Ridge area, Patapsco. So all of these communities are at least uh, getting some strong winds and, and a rotating thunderstorm. And we're also getting some reports of some thunderstorm damage, um, some trees and wires down near Old Annapolis Road and Ches Chestnut Grove Road. So this is going to be in Liberty Town. This is going to be in Frederick County. This is where this cell just pushed through uh, within the last hour. Those folks were the first ones to get this thunderstorm and we're now getting that thunderstorm. So, and it's still continuing to maintain its energy, it's still tapping into the energy that's in the atmosphere, still producing some heavy rain. We're getting some lightning, we're getting some hail, and we're getting this rotation signature and these strong winds. Uh, really concerned about folks that are in the Clearfield, Reese, Constance Acres, uh, Bollinger Estates, Rebus Retreat areas, because that's where we're seeing the strongest winds at this hour. Heavy rain and hail all around this system, but these uh, folks are actually picking up on the strongest winds, and that's also where we've seen the highest shear. You can see that shear co-located with um, those stronger winds that we were pointing out. Co-located, and then we're also seeing this rotation signature. I wanna try to query some of these wind speeds just so that I can get an idea of what radar is estimating. Radar is estimating 50 miles per hour wind gusts uh, just to the south of the Clearfield area. Uh, we're also getting other reports of some stronger wind gusts in that same region. And we can query those wind gusts and that's going to be around 70, so a little bit less than 70 miles per hour. Constance Acres, that's going to be less than 58. Um, so significant rotation, significant winds um, as this cell continues to push on out towards the north and east. And no reports on if this warning is set to expire anytime soon. But for now, this tornado warned cell is um, we're going to be tracking this at least for the next 17 minutes as it continues to move towards the east. The good news that southernmost cell that was in southern Carroll County, uh, most of that energy has shifted on over towards the east. And uh, we could see them reissue that warning uh, within the next couple of minutes. Um, it'll just be shifted towards the east. But folks in Reisterstown, you're starting to see some of that rain come down and the winds are going to pick up there as well. And we're going to continue to see this uh, move on off towards the north and east at about 25 miles per hour. Um, so we're also getting more reports in that same area in Frederick County. Um, this is going to be Liberty Town. Uh, the 911 call center uh, is getting reports of trees and wires down um, near Route 26 and 75. So this is that 
same track that this storm has been on, same areas picking up on multiple reports of down trees and wires, uh, no doubt power lines. So no doubt we'll get reports of some power outages there. So folks that are upwind, um, you need to be prepared for that. If you're in Hampstead, you should be in your safe place, hopefully with your charged device. If you're in any portion of northern Baltimore County or northern Harford County, be prepared for this thunderstorm to at least bring those same type of winds to your communities, if not uh, a tornado warned cell as well. So be prepared for that. Charge up your devices. Go ahead and get into your safe space with your, you, your kids, um, and buckle down and be prepared for us to track you through this storm as it continues to shift towards the east and looks like I'm getting an update right now. Uh, we're still getting those uh, the movement at about 25 miles per hour. So want to give you a heads up one more time and we'll toss to Jamie within just the next minute. But if you're in Hampstead, if you're in Trenton, uh, Armacost, Forreston, Fowlsburg, Boring, Woodensburg, you should already be sheltering in place as this system is just to the west of you and it will be pushing into your region within the next few minutes. Patrick, uh, this storm here, uh, this this warning that we're under, it has taken an awful long time to get across 27 up to 97 and cross 97, continuing to, to move east. We're hearing reports of a lot of rain, a lot of thunder, but n the wind is starting to pick up a little bit. Some people are complaining now they've lost some trees in the backyard out there in Carroll County. In Carroll County, you got Westminster, and if we drift into Reisterstown and Glendon, I mean, there's no stranger to tornado activity out there, so they know what to do out there. But again, seek shelter now if you're looking yourself and your community in the red. We're on Facebook Live right now, so if you uh, don't have our TV on, if you can go to your mobile device, go on Facebook. If you're on watching us now on Roku, on our streaming platforms, hit me up. Tell me what's going on outside your own door here, and we'll put it on the air because we want to keep everybody safe and sound. But uh, are you uh, this uh, the warning until 930? Are you surprised they haven't lifted it yet or? Um, right now, the rotation signature is still there, so I completely understand why the National Weather Service is, has not lifted it. And I'll show you that in just a minute. This is a traditional look at what you normally see on radar. And this is like a blob, a lot of rain, lots of reds and some yellows. But whenever we switch it over to what we call storm relative velocity, we're able to kind of do a different observation of what's happening in the atmosphere. So no longer are we looking at the rain, but this is strictly a metric that we use to look at wind. And you can see the brighter greens over Bethel. The brighter the green, by the way, the stronger the winds. But also at the same time, you can see the reds that are pretty bright uh, near Patapsco, Patapsco Woods. And because you have them so close together and because the colors are so bright, that indicates some serious rotation in the atmosphere. And unfortunately, there's, we don't have cameras in every neighborhood on every block. There's no way for us to look and say, oh, hey, I see a tornado. But what we can do is see, hey, this rotation is broad, but it's bright. So that means that it's strong. And if it's strong, that rotation can stretch all the way down to the ground. And that's how meteorologists determine, hey, this is a worn cell. So that's why 85% of the time, there's an actual tornado on the ground. The other 15% of the time, we see videos of funnel clouds or just the clouds moving in a circular uh, motion. That's what we're trying to go off of here. And we're still seeing those signatures right now. It's nighttime, so getting confirmation of anything, whether it's just strong winds or an actual tornado, is gonna take a little bit of time because folks are in bed, at home, eating dinner. Uh, and we wanna make sure that you and your families can do all of those things and stay safe. So if you're inside of this warning uh, zone, you should be in your safe place. And if you're downwind, you should be moving there. So let's talk about safe place first. Safe place, what is it? You need to be in an interior room away from all doors and all windows. Now for me, that's gonna be my walk-in closet. For you, that may be a bathroom. For you, that may be the door underneath the stairs, underneath the steps in the house. Uh, that's gonna be your safe place because you have the most elements uh, protecting you from whether that's just some debris flying in the air or a tree limb, uh, you have better chances if you're not near those outer walls. Folks that are in Brentwood Acres, Adams Chance, everybody inside of this polygon that you can see on your screen right now, that's gonna include folks in Shiloh and Hillsdale and Hampstead, you should be at that place already. But we also wanna put folks on alert that have not received a tornado warning because within the next 11 minutes, we're gonna know if this is an expired warning we're going to make a decision on whether we're going to continue to keep this pushing to the east. And if that rotation holds tight, 
then that means that folks that are not in that polygon right now, but are right next to it, Albentown, Armaco, Trenton, Upperco, Pleasant Grove, Mount Carmel, Coopersville. That means all of your communities are going to be included. Why wait? Let's go ahead and be prepared now to be in that safe place just in case this warning continues. And we're continuing to see that that rotation signature, man. It is still pretty evident on on radar. Um, so definitely not looking like this is going to expire unless we really start to see this thing tear apart within the next few minutes. Uh, still picking up on some pretty powerful shear. And actually, this is the strongest shear uh, value that we've seen. And this is um, just to the east of Patapsco Woods, north of Lawndale, including folks that are south of Wesley Chapel. So this is along Wesley Road and Tank Road. That's where we're seeing a pretty solid shear indicator uh, right now moving towards the east. And you can see that rotation signature. Um, and I'm going to circle it for you. You can see that tightening. And it's tighter now than it was a few minutes ago. And that's why we don't just drop warnings as soon as we see a little bit of expansion. We have to look at a trend. Is it trending down or is it maybe just having a minute and, and breathing? And is it going to tighten back up? We're continuing to see a pretty tight signature and that's going to be south of Hampstead. So that's going to be uh, Patapsco, Patapsco Woods, south of Lee's Mills, uh, just to the east of Castles Rising. And this is moving to the east northeast. So if you're in Filesburg, that warning is going to get extended, but you're probably already picking up on some pretty breezy winds there and in upper coast, same for boring, pleasant grove and Trenton. So my my uh, advice to you in those locations right now is to go ahead and shelter in place. Go ahead and move to that safe room because that rotation is not far away. And if it continues to hold, you're going to be in a warning that you're going to see winds increasing pretty quickly. You're going to see conditions deteriorate uh, quite rapidly. So continuing to monitor this cell as it moves towards the east northeast. And we're looking to see uh, other signatures that we can uh, determine to be of, of, of value. And the shear one is a, is a pretty good one for where we're seeing some of the greatest instability. Um, so concerns for folks in this region. We can query some of these winds to try to get uh, an estimate of some of these wind gusts. And look at that. If you were with us over the last few minutes, the greatest number that we had saw was 70. But now with this tightening that we're seeing, radar is indicating winds up to 80 miles per hour. This is going to be just to the east of Harper Estates, Patapsco. This is that's uh, Patapsco Road. Let me try to get an intersection for you. Uh, this is going to be Patapsco Road just to the south and west of where it intersects Wesley Road. Uh, so that area right now is where we're picking up on some of the strongest winds that we've seen um, in our viewing area with this thunderstorm. So this uh, needs to be tracked out so that folks can uh, get some lead time because I do think that if a warning comes down, it's gonna come down pretty quick and it's gonna get extended into some areas that are uh, a, a little more populated than the areas that are included. So let's get a new tracker line drawn We'll take this out about 25 miles or so. Uh, Hampstead, you should already be in place. Uh, folks in Butler, you have about 14 minutes before this is moving into your neighborhood. Um, Sparks and Moncton, you have about 20 minutes or so, and this will arrive in Jarrettsville um, in just under 40 minutes. So continue to monitor this cell uh, as it's moving towards the east at, uh, looks like uh, it's moving towards the east at about 15 miles per hour or so. Um, this is continuing to be um, tracked to the east. And right now, this is going to extend into portions of Baltimore County is what I'm getting. I haven't seen that. There it is. So it has gotten extended into portions of Baltimore County. So this is folks that I, we were telling to be in place. Uh, we knew that this would get extended in pretty quickly. Um, folks in Butler, you need to be in place. Pleasant Grove, Coopersville, Forreston. Pretty Boy, Helltown, Cedar Grove, all of you folks need to be sheltering in place as this rotation is tightened. It's tightened. And um, that means that we're going to see some pretty strong winds at a very minimum uh, and maybe even a, a tornado moving into your communities as we head through the next few minutes. So let's zoom out, kind of do a reset. Um, we're tracking two tornado warnings that are uh, they're, they're matching. They're concurrent. They're right next to each other. One set to expire at 930. And as soon as that one expires, the next one takes over, moving it into portions of northern Baltimore County until 10 o'clock. So we're going to be tracking this uh, for a while. 
um, as it continues to shift towards the east. Uh, Jamie, this is exactly what we were afraid we would see uh, this warning get extended. Now, is this the, the, now if we go back to Frederick, this is where it started, right? And the yep. West Virginia came in through Frederick and now it's up here. Yep. And th is there anything behind this storm now? There is, there's a line of showers and thunderstorms. Uh, thankfully, there's not a lot of electricity in that line behind it. I'm gonna kind of circle it for you so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, this line hasn't been as robust. And typically this time of day, when you have a, a line of thunderstorms roll through, it kind of sucks a lot of the oxygen out of the room, so to speak. So the other thunderstorms, they can kind of move with the energy that they have, but those thunderstorms out in the front have kind of stabilized the atmosphere a little bit. So you don't normally get as robust storms, especially when they're this close. But of course, we'll watch it because, you know, that southern leg is going to be moving into areas that have not been tapped into. And that's going to be angling towards Howard County and southern Baltimore County. So those areas are still going to have the potential to see um, these thunderstorms get a little bit robust. And again, we should say that we have not had a visual sighting of a tornado. We have the possibility that it could pop up anywhere at any time. And that's why we're on the air right here. Uh, I, I think we have some information that we can put up on our screen right now that that'll better protect you here because you, you know, sometimes you forget what you're supposed to do. But if you are at home right now uh, during this tornado, uh, go to a windowless uh, interior, go to like a frame, right? The frame of your house. Yeah, like a, even the bathroom, I think, is the best place. Right? Uh, bathroom Almost is like, my backup. Right. And just uh, stay in there here. Here are some of the tips. Go to the lowest level. Everybody's in the basement right now. Get away from any windows and uh, try to stay away from the corners because they, they're the ones that, that attract the debris, right? Yep. You don't want to stand in the corner of any of the house. And uh, make sure that you're, uh, you're not by any sturdy furniture, such as a workbench, you know. Hold on to something here. And if you're in a mobile home, get out and find shelter immediately. And uh, those are just some of the quick, quick tips that we can get you so you can stay safe here tonight. And again, we're at 926. It's supposed to expire at 930. Your prediction is not it's going to extend. Yep, we've, we just got it extended till 10 o'clock. So that sale moving into Baltimore County is now set to expire at 10 o'clock because we're continuing to see a, a pretty tight rotation signature. Uh, and we saw it actually kind of gain a lot of energy over the last few minutes. It actually got a bit robust. Uh, some of those winds were gusting up to 80 miles per hour per some of our data, uh, some of our tools uh, letting us know that those winds elevated as it was moving closer to Baltimore County. So that alone was a reason enough for the National Weather Service to go ahead and redraw that polygon, extending that warning. Uh, once again, po portions of Southern uh, Carroll County still under this tornado warning as well now as for portions of Baltimore County. And that's gonna include all of these communities that you see highlighted on your screen. And we're gonna try to get you a better view there, yeah. So that's gonna include folks in Hampstead. Uh, Fowlsburg, boring, really concerned about folks in that corner of this cell because that's where we're seeing some of the strongest wind signatures. Upper Cove, Fowlsburg, boring, uh, stretching eastward over the next few minutes in Trenton and Pleasant Grove. So those folks already need to be taking Jamie's advice. Ashley just got a warning in Sparks. Has any rotation been seen? We have not seen the rotation in Sparks, have we? We have not seen, we, we have not gotten any confirmation of any rotation from the eyes. And we don't want you to be our eyes either. We want you, if you're inside of these areas, we want you to go to your interior room, uh, go to your safe place. Uh, but we don't have any confirmation of that as of now. We're just going strictly off of uh, the rotation that we're seeing indicated on radar. Uh, that along with several other um, mechanisms that we have to look at the atmosphere. So we're looking at velocity. We're looking at radar. We're seeing that rain coming down very heavy. And, and, and quite frank, even if you wanted to be a Superman and go and see this for us, you couldn't because the rain is coming down so heavy in this region, um, any tornado that exists inside of this warned area is going to be rain wrapped. So that means that it's gonna be surrounded by rain. You're not going to be able to see it as much as uh, we love showing those pictures and videos. This is not a time for you to get those images for us. Save it for when there's snow on the ground. We love all the snow pictures. We love the dog pictures. We don't need you taking pictures of this for us. We're going off of what we see with our tools to let us know that there's a situation that is potentially dangerous for folks. We've already had confirmation of trees down and wires, power lines down. And so we don't need you getting into any place that could potentially threaten your safety. That's why we want you to get to that walk-in closet, that bathroom, uh, that 
little room, that little closet that's underneath the stairs, whatever you need to do to put as much space between you and the outer door elements, that's what you need to do as this sale continues to move towards the east. So let's get a, an updated timeline on where this is headed so that we can give more folks a little bit of lead time here. We're going to switch to where we can see our storm relative velocity because that lets us know where that rotation is. And then we're going to actually track that out as it shifts towards the east. And I'm going to track this out a ways because I want to get more communities involved. Butler, five minutes. Jamie, someone was speaking to you from Sparks. Sparks. Uh, you're picking up on some of that wind in Sparks and you're getting some of that rain, but you're still ab about 13 minutes away from where we're seeing the strongest rotation signature in Sparks. So you have a, about five minutes, I'd say, to get in your safe place before you hear those winds really kick up out there and be potentially under this uh, rotating thunderstorm. Folks in Phoenix, you're about 17 minutes away, same from Moncton. Jaredsville, this is creeping closer and closer to you, trying to give everybody as much lead time as we can, and that's moving into the Jaredsville area within the next 30 minutes. So once again, uh, just as a regroup, it is now 930, uh -huh. and the National Weather Service has allowed that original warning to expire, and we're continuing to monitor this one tornado warned cell that is in effect for portions of Baltimore County until the 10 o'clock hour. It is moving at 15 miles per hour. Uh, looks like we have some, uh, some video. Uh, this is one of our traffic cameras. Uh, rain is definitely coming down. This is uh, at Cockey's Mill Road in 795. Uh, you can see in the distance, uh, you just saw a lightning flash. See a very, very dark cloud and some rain. Um, so definitely not a situation where you want to be out on the roads. The good news, the roads look to be pretty bare. Uh, just a couple of vehicles traveling. And if you know someone who's traveling, let them know that we're tracking a rotating thunderstorm that has a tornado warning attached to it. And it's just not going to be the move to be out and about. I mean, look at the storm. I mean, it went over 27, went over Rice's Town Road, 140, over 30, and now it's heading to 83. I mean, it's... It's trucking. It is moving. Um, we want to put up on your screen. We told you what to do indoors. Let's take it outside because there was really no time to get outside and clean up what you could do in, in like 15 minutes. Let's put this up on the screen here and just tell you what you should do. Well, if possible, you got to get inside the building. Of course, you're, like Patrick said, don't go out and try to get your cell phone and try to get video here. If shelter is not available, lie in a ditch or a low-lying area. Uh, watch out for floodwaters. He said it's heavy, heavy rain. And then use your arms to protect your head and your, your whole body, as a matter of fact. But again, that's if you're outside and you're caught in this. But how about if you're traveling? What do you, what do, you do when you're, if you're on the road, one of these major highways? Well, you know, the, the thing that, you, that, that we, we want you to do now, you know, back in the day when we were all kids, uh, folks used to always try to say, get underneath one of the overpasses. That is not what you want to do. Uh, that's actually one of the worst places you can be. Uh, being under an overpass, essentially think of it as a funneling effect. Um, the winds actually are stronger underneath that overpass than they are out in the elements. It's not the best thing to do. Um, it's not something we all want to do, but the best thing to do if you are caught on the interstate out in an open field on an open road is actually lie down in the ditch. That's what you want to do. You want to get as close as close to the ground as possible. And if you can find something like something concrete to hold on to while you're down there, that's going to be the best bet you want to uh, get low. That is the goal. And you can see rain coming down uh, all across our state. Uh, you're not getting a visual on where this is from, uh, but my director can tell me in my ear. This is which on 83. Camera. This is on 83. This will be in Baltimore County. OK, Where? cool deal. So uh, you can see some rain there that's on the edge. That's some of the lighter rain. Uh, it's going to get heavier as this system continues to shift towards the east. And we're in communication with our National Weather Service partners because uh, we have a spotter network sprinkled across the state, uh, trying to get some some views of what they've been able to see happening in their communities, uh, the areas that have already be, been impacted, trying to get reports uh, of what they actually see on the ground. And as soon as we get those reports, we'll let you know what we see. Now, I want to zoom out a little bit because I'm starting to see uh, some stronger rain uh, and some breezy winds moving to places like Reisterstown, uh, Owings Mills, you're gonna be on the corner of that. Right now, uh, you, you guys are not under this uh, tornado warning. Right now, all we're tracking for you is a, uh, some strong wind and some heavy rain. Uh, but this rotation signature continues to shift towards the east. And let me give you a circle to kind of like point this out where the signature is the strongest. Hey, Patrick, let me jump in here. Tornado warning northwestern Baltimore County until 10 tonight. Yep. Until 10 tonight. Yep. 
until 10 o'clock. And these communities are the reason. Uh, once again, this is impacting folks in Butler, Dover, uh, folks in Coopersville. This is going to be moving into your neighborhood over the next few minutes. Helltown and Forreston, a rotating thunderstorm. We're going to switch to Shear. And we're not seeing as strong of a signature as what we saw earlier, but it is still pretty significant um, just to the east of Pleasant Grove, stretching to Coopersville all the way down towards Dover. So uh, getting lots of um, different variables that are telling me why the National Weather Service is allowing this warning to continue. Once again, this is for northern Baltimore County, including folks all the way from Filesburg all the way to Coachman's Field. That's including folks in Brandy Springs and Retreat Farms and Belfast. Until the 10 o'clock hour as this is uh, shifting towards the east. It's moving at about 15 miles per hour right now. And to get variations in these speed in speeds of these uh, t rotating thunderstorms, it's not um, odd. This is something that happens all the time. They speed up, they slow down, but we want to give folks as much lead time as possible. So we'll retract this out real quick and uh, see which communities need to be on guard over the next few minutes as this rotating thunderstorm shifts towards the east northeast we'll do this at about 30 miles and that gives us a few more communities uh, like sparks uh, about five minutes ago we told you 13 minutes this is about eight minutes away now uh seven minutes away phoenix it's about 10 minutes away merriman's mill you have about 15 minutes before the strong wind this heavy rain and this rotating thunderstorm is on your doorstep. What's left of this, we've been telling folks in Jarrettsville for the better part of 20 minutes now to go ahead and shelter in place and be prepared. This is continued to track towards the east right now. And if you're in Jarrettsville, this is less than 30 minutes away. This is about 25 minutes away before the part of the thunderstorm that is rotating makes it onto your neighborhood. And if you're in Bel Air, I know we have a lot of viewers there. You're also going to want to be on guard as this is pushing towards the east and you have about 40 minutes. So about the same lead time that we gave folks in Jaredsville about 20 minutes ago. This is a situation that is continuing to unfold across our state and we're working to get confirmation of what we're seeing on the ground. But the best thing that you, the viewer, can do for us is get to that safe place as these uh, this thunderstorm producing some pretty strong wind and some heavy rain and potentially a tornado continues to shift uh, towards the east at about 15 miles per hour. So wanting folks to to be on guard we're working right now to find out if there are any power outages um, out in Western Maryland, specifically for folks that are in Frederick County, because we have had reports of down trees and power lines. Uh, once again, one of those reports came from, oh, they both came from Liberty Town. Uh, one of them was uh, near Old Annapolis Road and Chestnut Grove Road, trees and power lines down. Another one uh, from that same area near Route 26 and 75. Um, the good news, um, we're actually in communication right now with uh, the EMS here in Baltimore County, and they're not seeing big power outages in Baltimore County yet, um, and there are no damage reports yet. Keep in mind, this is just moving into Baltimore County, so we still have a little bit of work to do to gather some data from Carroll County and Frederick County. As soon as we get those reports, we're going to bring that to you. We want to thank our partners with the National Weather Service who are in constant communication with us also, trying to get you all of the information that you need to know to keep you and your family safe. So, reset. It's been a while. Uh, why are we cutting into programming? It's 930. You'd rather be watching something else. Um, at this moment in time, there's a tornado warning that is in effect for some of our viewers. And anytime that happens, we cut into programming. Right now, we're concerned about northern Baltimore County because uh, this warning is moving through that region and it's in effect for another 22 minutes. So this is set to expire at 10 o'clock. And you can see some of the big names that are included in that warning. One of them is Butler, but folks in Sparks and Moncton, um, you are um, on the edge. So if this continues, this will be pushed into your region. But once we zoom in, you can see there's lots of other communities that are being impacted by this warning. That's Trenton, that's Pleasant Grove, that's Mount Carmel, Forreston, uh, Coopersville, Butler. Heavy rain, strong winds, and rotating thunderstorm at nighttime. Just not what we like to see uh, with uh, any of these thunderstorms that are pushing through. Let's try to get another view of that rotation signature. And it is not as tight as it was about 10 minutes ago. If you were with us, I circled it. I told you we were tightening. We saw some pretty strong winds. Uh, right now, that rotation signature is pretty, um, pretty wide. So what does that mean, Patrick? 
What that means is we still have a rotating thunderstorm. It's just that that rotation isn't tight. It's very broad. So unfortunately, you can't look outside right now. But if I were in that area and I looked outside, what I would be able to see is swirl, a big swirl. I would be able to see a rotation, but I would be able to see clouds going in one direction. I'd be able to see clouds coming in another direction. That's what we're looking at right now. That's expanded. And that happens a lot of times with thunderstorms. They expand, they tighten. When they tighten, we get worried because we start to see those brighter greens that you saw earlier, those brighter reds and sometimes pinks that you saw earlier. And that lets us know that that is a tightening, tightening rotation. And at the very least, a funnel cloud. At the worst, a tornado. And there's no way for us to see, hey, it's touched the ground, so it's no longer a funnel cloud, it's a tornado, other than just going through what we see on radar. So we wanna let everybody know what we're tracking and give you an idea um, of what's happening. And it looks like the National Weather Service is um, already going to send out a survey team tomorrow to mm. Frederick County because Frederick. the reports of the down trees and power lines are reasons enough for them to investigate. It's the timing of this storm worry you. You know, here we are, 940 at night. I mean, could this all have been different at 640 this afternoon? You know, that, that's a two-sided coin. Because, you know, if you're with us whenever we talk about thunderstorms a lot of times in the afternoon, we're worried about the heating of the day adding as be playing the part of gasoline on a fire, um, allowing these thunderstorms to explode. So in one conversation, having it in the evening is better for us because there's, even though there's a lot of energy out there, there's less of it now than there was a few hours ago. The bad side of that is it's nighttime. Folks are trying to have dinner. Some folks may be working, waking up, getting ready to go to third shift and you can't go and look outside and see what's coming. It's dark. And then on top of that, this is rain wrap, some pretty heavy rain inside of this tornado. So the timing of it from the perspective of people being comfortable with there being a warning that they can't even look. You know, if you're if you're in Jarrettsville, you'd probably be able to look off in the distance out west and be like, oh, it's really dark. Or maybe it's not. I'm not worried because, you know, people, we make our own assessments sometimes, regardless of what we try to tell you to do, you know, and everybody's entitled. But at nighttime, you don't even get the option of in Jarrettsville looking down. 30 miles to the west and seeing if there's a dark cloud over there. You don't get that luxury. So um, unfortunately, it's a double sided coin with the timing of the day. What, what's it mean to you that the National Weather Service is going to send out a crew right away tomorrow? Uh, not not a lot, not something that's unusual because of the fact that we have reports of down trees, down power lines in multiple locations and not too far away from each other. Um, they want to see if all of the trees and power lines are blown in one direction. If they're all in one direction, that's a straight line wind event. If you have a tree blown here, a, a branch or, or a power line blown this way, a roof of a house blown in this direction, if you can get uh, points to show you that there was winds blowing in all directions, then that's how the National Weather Service essentially confirms, hey, this was not a straight line wind event or just a regular wind event. This was a tornado because it was there was damage in all being thrown in all directions. Right. So it, it's, it's definitely a, a, a complicated thing, but not shocked that they are already gonna send out a survey team uh, or two in the portions of Western Maryland as we head into the day tomorrow. So I wanna zoom out, Jamie, just to give everybody a heads up because in these type of events, when you're watching TV and we're uh, kind of focused on one area and everyone else is kind of like, well, you know, cause you're on Facebook. Uh, what about me? I'm in, I'm in Annapolis. What about us on the Eastern shore? I'm in Easton, I'm in Northeast. You know, um, a lot of times we tend to be hyper-focused because if what folks in Baltimore County weren't going through what they're going through right now, you wouldn't see us until, until 11 o'clock. So uh, once again, everyone else, you're fine. I know that if you're in Owings Mills and Holbrook and Garrison and Ricerstown, you're getting some rain. If you're in Cockeysville, you're looking like, oh, we're close not close enough. Right now, things are looking good for you. The winds are going to pick up. The rain's going to come down. But our primary focus right now is for these folks in this warning. So here's another look at 83. This is 83 at York Road and folks are driving down the street. You can see rain coming down. The roads are slippery. So that's a reason for you to be cautious. You can see lightning in the distance uh, that lets us know that we're, we're, we're in that thunderstorm and this is uh, pushing towards the east. Thankfully, we do not have any confirmation uh, of, of a tornado yet. Does the, um, does the storm show you anything by the, the, the slow moving instead? Do you want it to be fast moving, get in and get out, of course, or does the slow down worry you even more? The, the slowdown doesn't worry me except for the folks that are experiencing it because yeah, yeah. now the duration of their wind event or, or whatever their trauma is, is now going to be longer than just 15, 
10 minutes. It's now you had the rain beforehand. It's moving slow. So then you have to deal with the wind, maybe the tornado, and then you have to deal with what's behind it. And that's some more rain. So it, is, it delays the time that you can kind of assess, you know, your damage. You know, so that part of it, uh, thankfully, there's not a correlation to intensity and speed. You know, there could be a very, very strong tornado moving at 15 miles per hour. There could be the weakest one ever moving at that same speed. So that's the, okay. that's the, thankfully, there's no correlation to that speed. It just the amount of trauma that you experience going through this event and anxiety because there's a level of anxiety that comes with with thunderstorms when you hear it raining you hear the thunder you hear the wind every once in a while or you hear us talking about this tornado warning that's been in your community now for 20 minutes um, all of those things can be um, a bit stressful but right now i'm taking a look at a lot of our metrics that rotation continues to um, to weaken. So we're trending in the right direction, uh, but we have to see this continue for longer than just two or three radar scans because we saw this happen earlier and then we saw a crazy tightening. But right now, if I were to say anything based off of what I'm seeing on radar, um, we are trending in a positive direction. Uh, we're not seeing those crazy winds gusting 80 plus miles per hour that we saw on radar about 20 minutes ago. And our rotation signature is very broad. Now, we'll have to watch this regardless to whether this warning gets expired within the next 15 minutes. We'll be watching this because the bro rotation broadening doesn't mean this is over. This means that we have a break from it. We have to watch this to see if it tightens again because that's the nature of thunderstorms. If it moves into an area that has more energy for it to tap into, then we can see it get a little bit more, more robust. The good news, just based off of all of the parameters that we've been looking at, um, the Eastern Shore team looks to be the most stable right now. So if we can get through making this uh, system continue to weaken and get to the, to the bay, it looks to be weakening, uh, continuing that weakening process, at least the northern half of the, um, of the, of the uh, Eastern Shore. The southern half of the Eastern Shore is still unstable, so we'll be watching that too. But this particular cell itself is gonna run out of energy as it gets closer to the Eastern Shore the northern eastern shore. And I want to make sure that I clarify that because we have viewers in Stevensville, Centerville, and lots of uh, uh, Easton. We're still going to be watching you guys because there's energy moving your way um, and you're under that level one risk as well. But for now, with this cell, the trends have been for this rotation to be broadening. We don't see the bright greens that we saw earlier here. You still see a little bit of brightness, but it's not popping out at you like a green light. That's a good sign. The red's not as robust, not as dark, and we're not seeing any pinks in there either. So that's letting us know at least uh, the rotation is weakening for the moment. Let's switch this back to a conventional view that you're used to seeing. And that lets f folks know that, hey, there's still some rain falling. There's still some pretty breezy winds out there. Uh, if you're in Moncton, uh, Sparks, Cockeysville, Owings Mills, um, you are still getting some heavy rain. The good news, I was telling you a few minutes ago that I was seeing weakening, National Weather Service agrees. So they have allowed that tornado warning for Baltimore County to expire. With that being said, me and Jamie, we're gonna wrap this up and we're gonna let folks get back to their regular programming, but we want you to know that we're gonna be here in the weather center watching these thunderstorms. And if that rotation signature tightens, we will be back on air. And of course, for you folks on Facebook.